Good morning, I'm Harley Schlanger from the LaRouche Organization with your daily video update for June 19th, 2023. Today we're going to be looking at a battle that most of you probably don't know has been going on, at least most people in the West don't know, which is the battle between the BRICS nations and the City of London and Wall Street. I'm going to be relying a lot on a report from my colleague Paul Gallagher, who's one of the editors of the Executive Intelligence Review, who wrote about the Wall Street Journal article, which appeared on Friday, which really let the proverbial cat out of the bag uh, in writing about this battle underway, which is one which will determine your future. And as I said, most people in the West don't know about it because this has been largely covered up by the Western media and the psychological warfare operations of London and Wall Street. But it is a fight between the BRICS, the, uh, the organization of Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa, which is expanding rapidly, and that of the City of London and Wall Street and the IMF. The headline to the story tells the whole story, actually. Quote, a bank China built to challenge the dollar now needs the dollar, unquote. Now, all you need to know about the fragility of the rules-based order is in this story. The Western economic model is in trouble. It's being abandoned by a growing number of nations every day. And the, the, this is the battle which is behind the war against Russia being fought in Ukraine and also by the moves to create a global NATO to challenge China as it's emerging as the second leading, or in some cases, leading economic power in the world. And it's, there's a desperate attempt underway to stop the moves for a new system. Now, the president of the New Development Bank is the former president of Brazil, Dilma Rousseff. And on June 10th, she said, quote, the New Development Bank's strategic goal is to become the leading bank for emerging markets and developing countries. And this was a central feature of the recent St. Petersburg International Economic Forum, at which President Putin announced the end of the neo-colonial order. So why is this seen as such a threat to the Western oligarchs who run the global financial system? Well, the issue on the surface is de-dollarization, which is really an effort to move away from control of Wall Street in London toward a new development architecture that's outside of the control of the oligarchs of London and Wall Street. And this article coincides with stepped up attacks against countries such as South Africa, Argentina, as well as the commitment to continue the war against Russia in Ukraine and threaten China. So let's just look at some of what's in this Wall Street Journal article. It, it starts out by, well, it doesn't, I'm sorry, it doesn't start out, but it has a section which is telling that has an attack on the New Development Bank President Dilma Rousseff. They're charging that she's involved in new uh, there's new evidence of corruption when she was president of Brazil. Now, what they actually outline are the old charges. She was essentially run out of office. She was put in prison for a while. But when these charges were disproven, she was released and has now been appointed the president of the New Development Bank. Now, the Wall Street Journal, in its article, cites their own sources to say that the New Development Bank, quote, is close to bankruptcy, unquote. They say it's not lending, it's a zombie bank. They say that the NDB, as well as the Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank, are corrupt. And one of the things they identify is they're paying higher interest rates to issue bonds than it would if it were dealing exclusively in dollars. Well, virtually every bank is having to offer higher interest rates to sell bonds to cover their short-term problems. So that's not unique to the New Development Bank. But then they go on to say that, quote, it is fighting for its very survival, threatened by its dependence on the U.S. currency, unquote. 
And then they throw in the kicker here. Wall Street is wary of lending to a bank almost 40% owned by Russia and China. That's the issue. Russia and China are at the center of the shift of the global architecture from London and Wall Street to a development perspective for the global south. And that's why this attack is in the Wall Street Journal. Now, they go on to say that to bolster its resources, the bank is in talks with Saudi Arabia, Argentina, and Honduras about becoming members. Now, there are more than 20 nations, maybe as many as 30 nations, that are actually applying for membership in the New Development Bank. And the reason is simple, because they can't get credit from the International Monetary Fund. They can't get credit from the Western banks. This is part of the blackmail policy that forces these nations to subservience to the rules-based order. Now, they go on to, to make the final conclusion that the, there's, there's no way that a bank that's not connected to Wall Street can survive. That, and the point here is the obvious one, which is that either you play by the rules of the rules-based order or you'll be written off. And that's the policy of the West. Now, that's the real story behind the war in Ukraine, to weaken Russia to stop the BRICS. The idea of the rules-based order is that there's only one economic model that's allowed, and that's the one of the unipolar order. You go outside it, and you'll be crushed. Just look what happened to Gaddafi in Libya and Saddam Hussein in Iraq. They were victims of the unipolar order. They were looking at moving toward new financing based on oil and gold and, and other commodities. And this is part of the trend which is the, uh, being undertaken by the BRICS and the uh, Shanghai Cooperation Organization and others. Instead of accepting dollars, which are fiat currency that depend on the U.S. government and the uh, enforcement of NATO for their power, they're looking for another model, one which is based on physical goods production and credit for that. And if necessary, moving away from the dollar to use national currencies for their trade and settlement system. Now, the Wall Street Journal article is an example of hybrid warfare, attacking an alternative with lies and disinformation without even feeling the need to explain what's really going on underneath. So the reality is that the era of neocolonialism is over. There was an attempt to do this back in the mid-50s uh, that culminated in a non-aligned movement meeting in April 1955 in Bandung. But the nations of, of the non-aligned movement and their leaders were targeted and it was never allowed to accomplish the objective of moving outside of the existing order. Now, 70 years later, nations of the global south are fighting for their freedom against the Western banks and corporate cartels of the Anglo-American empire. And that's what the fight is all about. So for those of us in the West who claim to love freedom and see economic growth as both a necessity for, for freedom as well as the outcome of, of a free economy. This is our fight. The governments of the U.S. and the nations of Europe should throw off the chokehold of the International Monetary Fund and the London and Wall Street banks and demand an end to the war in Ukraine and the adoption of a new security and development architecture which serves the mutual needs of all nations. That's what this fight is about, not some phony story about the corruption of Dilma Rousseff. Now, I, I would urge you to listen to the discussion that we had Saturday in the Manhattan Project. Um, I was one of the panelists, and we discussed this question of the implications of the end of colonial era and the move toward a new security and development architecture. This is the fight of every person who loves freedom and is committed to the ideals of Republican democracy. So I'll have the link at the bottom of the description section. Uh, listen to it. Let me know what you think. 
and I'll be back tomorrow. Hello, thanks for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of our videos. Support our independence to produce videos like these. Become a member of the LaRouche organization at thelarouche.org slash member. By becoming a member for $25 or more, you'll get special access to the EIR Alert Daily Briefing and Weekly Magazine, which is what I read to stay on top of things.